good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday night Anamkara meditation program. With all my heart, with all my love, I welcome you to our program this evening. So thank you for joining us for satsang. Satsang, keeping the company of the highest truth. That's you. That's who you are. It's the truth of your sublime, divine nature. And so you bring that to this evening along with you know, the power of your practices, the power of your presence, the power of your commitment to practice. You bring so much. So I'm very grateful that you joined us this evening. And so we're going to start as we have been with coming to the breath and slowing and deepening the breath and making use of this ancient mantra, simple mantra of aham, silently. It's just we're listening to it sort of internally. The ah as the breath comes in, and the hum as the breath goes out. The ah as the breath comes in slowly, and the hum as the breath goes out slowly. That mantra meaning simply I am. So it's, the, the, it's invoking the bare awareness of simply being. That's the, the nature of consciousness before the mind joins it up and identifies with a thought, a feeling, or this or that. So we become the I am happy, I am sad, I am this, I am that. This is just pure I am awareness. And it's really the foundational awareness, both of existence and really profound meditation, drops us into that. So we get free of everything associated with mind and body. They continue, they're there. Uh, but awareness gets free of that. And that's that radical state of freedom that the Eastern meditative traditions speak about and really mystic traditions uh, around the world. So we'll start out with that. And so on the inhalation, it's silently listening for the ah. And then hum.
and then continuing to breathe and remain with that awareness of simply being, simply I am, I am. No matter what the mind is doing, that field, that space of consciousness, of awareness, of simply being, is what holds all those thoughts, feelings, reactions, bodily sensations, memories, all that stuff arises and subsides in a field of awareness. That field of awareness is luminous, self-luminous. And so it illumines each thought as it arises, each feeling, each sensation, each memory, each little facet of our ordinary identity that the poor ego mind is busy cobbling together by identifying with this, identifying with that, and this is not, I don't want that, that's not me, and going on and on like that. But that awareness of being that just watches, just illumines, is completely steady, unmoved by movements of the mind. In the same way that the space in this room is unmoved by no matter what movements my body makes, Space doesn't move. That spaciousness of awareness, that spaciousness of being, as we get more dialed into that uh, through witnessing, through just watching, detached and aware, relaxed and at ease, just watching the flow of the mind and its contents go by, um, then we can become more familiar with that awareness that's already there. Now, we've been talking about uh, the process of projection and how the mind is constantly projecting things into that field, uh, taking it for itself, taking it for what others are. Uh, probably the most fundamental thing that the mind projects is otherness. Otherness, separation. Others are separate from us. The world is separate from us. Uh, all these things are, are differentiated. It's actually a kind of a hard-won state for the ordinary mind. Yeah? It, it has to gain that. As infants, we're fused. We're fused with the reality around us, and it takes quite some time. We know this sort of developmentally in psychology, what it takes for individual consciousness to separate and then it has to separate in different layers over time. So Carl Jung, when he was talking about uh, what's the process of coming to know the truth of who we are in a, in a psychological sense even, he, would he called it the individuation process. We're individuating uh, our sense of who we are from all the things that were laid on us, all the things we identified with growing up, um, the patterns we took in from parents and their reactions, the world, peers, authorities, all those things that sort of unconsciously went in um, and became fused with who we are. Uh, so healthy, uh, a healthy psyche has to differentiate and say, oh, wait a minute, I need to be conscious. What am I choosing? I have to often review a lot of that stuff and disidentify with some of it. Well, in the meditative paradigm, it's a quantum leap beyond that. Um, that's healthy and useful psychologically. And the, the meditative traditions are saying, oh, and that individuation process, well, it's got to circle around to conscious, conscious awareness of unity. You might think of the infant as unconscious. So they're bound by unconsciousness. They're fused. They haven't differentiated their, themselves from their environment at all, themselves from their parents, themselves from anything. So that's, that's not the state we're looking for. We're looking for the conscious unification, the consciousness that holds all um, as self, uh, capital S self, universal self, and so the practices, when we look at that, the practices are aimed at this state of unity consciousness. Uh, it's not a regress state. I mean, there, there were times when psychologists thought meditation was this state of regression to that sort of oceanic 
uh, fusion state of an infant. Uh, well, that's, that's unfortunately is what sometimes Western psychology does to pathologize things it doesn't understand. Uh, because the truth is, it's way beyond that. It's being conscious of both our complete unity with all that is and conscious of this vehicle's differentiation from things in the domain that it exists. So it's additive. And it also helps support the ordinary mind knowing how it's not this, not that, differentiate, individuate. It supports that. So when we're doing the practices, and so tonight we're going to do some chants of mantras, all the practices are aimed, just like the simple practice we did with the mantra aham, are aimed at, oh, let's go back now consciously, awake, you know, Buddha, awake, it's awake, aware, conscious of unity and that domain, that infinite, boundless domain of consciousness, so that we can know that as intimately, as fully, as we know this limited domain having to do with, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm a this, I'm a that. So we want to add to it the fullness of being. And that relieves the poor ego mind from so many burdens that it carries. Right? Because so often it's carrying how it has to defend against this or how it has to bolster itself up or do this or that. And it can come to rest in pure being. That it has this fundamental support under it of being. It doesn't have to keep trying to be by trying to become. See, the mind's um, strategy for being is becoming, becoming something, something ideal it holds, some other thing, um, just its pattern of becoming the thoughts, becoming feelings, it's constantly becoming. So we want to come to rest in the non-doing of simply being and not having to become anything. And then from that point of view, we can watch the mind. It's still going to try and do those things, but now we're not solely identified with it. Now we're not completely bound by it. So we have a more expansive view of what's possible. And more and more, we can have an expansive view of the truth of who we are and what all beings are, what all reality is. So that's why the practices keep aim at that. And that's a way of seeing how the practices uh, are cutting through the very root of projections, uh, because the ordinary mind's projections are all based on the ignorance, the not knowing the truth of who we are. So all its projections have that distortion uh, in it. And so when we're doing practices, like with mantra and chant, we're practicing the awareness, I am, I am that. I'm the throb of the infinite. Hmm? on that sound form of the infinite. That's what mantra is. It's a throb of that. It's not an ordinary thought. So we keep coming back to that and allow ourselves to just be carried along with that. And then that becomes something that we can integrate into everyday life. Yeah. Coming back to mantra silently as we're going about doing things. Sometimes chanting out loud. Sometimes putting on a, you know, a CD of chants or something, chanting along. Uh, all as ways of helping to keep our attention coming back to the truth of who we are. So we can really know that and then live that into the world. Because it's in the truth of who we are that that boundlessness that Buddha spoke about, the boundless nature of that pure awareness, the boundless loving kindness, the boundless compassion, uh, the boundless equanimity, the boundless wisdom. Well, that's all who you are. That's the very root of your true nature. So the mind doesn't have to scramble around trying to get those things. Getting them is based on the illusion I don't have them. Knowing your being. Ah, then you have the fullness of knowing that here and now, always. So it changes everything. 
So we're going to start with the chant. We're going to start with the chant, Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Durge, Kali Durge Namo Nama. And it's an invocation of the Great Mother. It's an invocation of that consciousness that we're talking about. That consciousness is the Infinite One. That consciousness is what gives birth to all. Uh, beautifully represented by things like, you know, this wonderful yantra, or even the tankas are also representations of her. So this primal consciousness, this primal throb of the infinite, that when we're attuned to that, it starts to change things. Because we're basically, we're vibrations. Right? Now, you know, when, when Einstein would talk about, you know, what's the nature of reality, it's all vibrating energy. It's all there is. It appears to the senses as form, but that's because our senses are transformers. They take the energy of light, turn it into an image. They take the energy of sound, turn it into an object of perception called sound. They're all transformers. We eat something, the body transforms it into energy um, to be metabolized. Everything about what even this vehicle is, is a transformer of energy. And so the ancient yogis and, and really the, all the different great traditions realized that the sound vibrations have an impact on our consciousness because we are a vibration. And so we can become you know, attuned to different levels of consciousness, different levels of awareness by immersing ourselves in the sounds of mantras and chanting them aloud. So not just listening. Uh, chanting is not a you know, spectator sport. It really it requires, oh, chant out loud. Turn up your speakers at home and uh, chant along. And it's that engagement and the power of sound that really literally penetrates down to the marrow of our bones. So chanting and chanting out loud can uh, impact the physical body uh, in, in marvelous ways, um, as well as what it's doing to transform our mind and consciousness. So as we chant, just allow yourself to get into it as much as you can. And we're going to chant for a few minutes, um, then we'll sit in silence for a little bit, and then do another chant, and then another chant, and uh, so we can really become immersed in uh, this infinite power the power of consciousness in sound form that's known as mantra. So here we'll begin. Om Kali Om Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Durge, Kali Durge, Namo Nama, Kali Durge, Namo Nama, Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Durge, Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Durge, Kali Durge, Namo Nama, Kali Durge, Namo Nama, Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Durge. Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Durge, Kali Durge, Namo Nama, Kali Durge, Namo Nama, Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Durge, Om Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Durge, 
So the next chant we're going to do is also an invocation of Ma. Um, and it's Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe, Kali Durga Jay Jay Ma. And Jaya, Jaya or Jai, they mean like hail or victory to. Jagadambe means the goddess of the universe, the goddess of the whole world, everything. Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe. And then it's Omatakali. So it's again an invocation of the Great Mother in all her wonderful, you know, exquisite, powerful forms. Um, she who gives birth to it all and known in every tradition. So Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe, Kali Durga Jay Jay Ma. And then Om Matakali, Om Matakali, Om Matakali, Jagadambe Jay Jay Ma. And then Om Matadurge, Om Matadurge, Om Matadurge, Jagadambe Jay Jay Ma. Yeah, Kali and Durge, same, uh, same divine mother, uh, different names for the same infinite one. Uh, so we'll dive into her name. 
uh, as we just were the other chant. Jaya Jagadamba Jaya Jagadamba Jaya Jagadamba Kali Durga Jajama Jaya Jagadamba Jaya Jagadamba Jaya Jagadamba Kali Durga Jajama Om Mata Kali Om Mata Kali Om Mata Kali Jagadambe Jajima Om Mata Durga Om Mata Durga Om Mata Durga Jagadambe Jajima Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Kali Durga Jajama Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Kali Durga Jajama Om Mata Kali Om Mata Kali Om Mata Kali Jagadambe Jajama Om Mata Durga Om Mata Durga Om Mata Durga Jagadambe Jajama Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Kali Durga Jajima Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Kali Durga Jajima Om Mata Kali Om Mata Kali Om Mata Kali Jagadambe Jajima Om Mata Durga Om Mata Durga Om Mata Durga Jagadambe Jajima Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Kali Durga Jajima Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe Kali Durga Jajima. Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Kali Jagadambe Jajima. Om Mata Durga, Om Mata Durga, Om Mata Durga Jagadambe Jajima Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Kali Durga Jajima Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Kali Durga Jajima Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Kali Jagadambe Jajima. Om Mata Durga, Om Mata Durga, Om Mata Durga Jagadambe Jajima. Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe Kali Durga Jajima. Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe, Jaya Jagadambe Kali Durga Jajima. Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Kali, Om Mata Kali Jagadambe Jajima. 
Ommaten dörge, ommaten dörge, ommaten dörge, jagadam be jejima, jaya jagadam be, jaya jagadam be, jaya jagadam be, kali dörge jejima, jaya jagadam be, jaya jagadam be, jaya jagadam be, kali dörge jejima. Om Mate Kali, Om Mate Kali, Om Mate Kali Jagadam Be Jejima. Om Mate Dorge, Om Mate Dorge, Om Mate Dorge Jagadam Be Jejima. Jaya Jagadam Be, Jaya Jagadam Be, Jaya Jagadam Be Kali Durga Jejima. Jaya Jagadam Be. Jay Jagadam Be, Jay Jagadam Be, Kali Durga Jay Jima. Om Mate Kali, Om Mate Kali, Om Mate Kali Jagadam Be Jay Jima. Om Mate Durga, Om Mate Durga, Om Mate Durga Jagadam Be Jay Jima. Jay Jagadam Be, Jay Jagadam Be. Jaya Jagadam Be Kali Durga Jejima Jaya Jagadam Be Jaya Jagadam Be Jaya Jagadam Be Kali Durga Jejima birth to all this, all that we are, and all that's beyond. Take refuge in her, the Divine Mother. And she's inseparable from Shiva, the auspicious one, that sublime, pure awareness. All Shiva sees is the dance of his beloved Shakti, Kali, Shiva. So the next chant we're going to do is Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho. Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho. Mahadev means the great, the great Lord. Shambho, the bestower of equanimity and calm and peace. Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho, the auspicious one. That's our own self. You know, these mantras and chants, these mantras are already arising within us. These are a throb of our own foundational awareness of being. So we have to keep the mind from projecting the infinite, the divine, someplace else. Now it's everywhere, but we want to know it as the truth of who we are, and then be able to see that projected everywhere. Uh, see, because to see that, that's to see reality. That's to see through the eyes of the divine. That then, through the eyes of God, all God sees is himself. To know that as the mystics have known, the Christian mystics, the Western, Eastern, all mystics, Come home to the truth. 
Uh, and it means giving up the mind's long-held belief that it's separate, it's somewhere else, it's some time of, other than now, some place other than here. There's a flame, there's a flame, a living flame of the divine in your heart. The flame of individual consciousness is a flame of universal consciousness. You may be drawn there sometime in meditation into the heart chakra and see this glorious flame. So many things to be known just from turning within. The mind keeps turning out to know. That's fundamental shift. Turn within. Turn within. It's all there. Now. So this next chant, invoking that of sublime awareness. And after this chant, we're just going to go into meditation and sit in the stillness. If the mind moves, let it take up mantra again. Let it rest on the throb of mantra with the awareness, I am that. I'm not that thought. I'm not that feeling. I'm not that memory. I'm not what happened earlier in the day or yesterday. None of that. I am the infinite. Shiva hum, Shiva hum. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. Chidananda Rupaha. I am the nature of consciousness and bliss. That's what that mantra means. So, now we chant. Jay Jay Shiva Shambho Jay Jay Shiva Shambho Jay Jay Shambho Jay Jay Shiva Shambho Mandeva Shambho Shambo Mandela Shambo Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambo Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambo Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambo Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambo Mandela Shambo Mandela Shambo Mandela Shambo Mandela Shambo Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambo Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambo Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho Mahandeva Shambho Mahandeva Shambho Mahandeva Shambho Mahandeva Shambho Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho Mahadeva Shambho Mahadeva Shambho Mandeva Shambho Mandeva Shambho Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho Jaya Jaya Shiva Shambho Mahadeva Shambho Mahadeva 
शंभो मान देव शंभो मान देव शंभो जय जय शिव शंभो जय जय शिव शंभो जय जय शिव शंभो जय जय शिव शंभो मान देव शंभो मान देव शंभो मान देव शंभो मान देव शंभो जय जय शिव शंभो जय जय शिव शंभो जय जय शिव शंभो जय जय शिव शंभो मान देव शंभो मान देव शंभो मान देव शंभो मान देव शंभो शिवम शिवम rest in the awareness that i am the infinite the boundless the all embracing
And then we'll close the slow chant of Om Namah Shivaya. truly benefit everyone, and may all beings know complete freedom from suffering. And namaste. Coming home to the truth, the truth of who you are, the truth of all beings, nature, the divine, all creation. So we treat everything and everyone with that love and respect. And through the practices, we can come to fully know that. We can experience that flame of the divine, the living flame of love, the living flame of the infinite within, within everyone, within your own self. To know that. That's where the unshakable equanimity arises from, not from the mind. To know that, that absolute steadiness of being, you leave behind the mind. Come home to yourself. And to help with that, we have a new course starting on February 5th, uh, a contemplative course on uh, Kali's Bazaar, penned by Kalidas, the collection of sacred poetry that serves as a leaping off point during the sessions that we do 
that we go into the contemplation and then have these rich discussions of people's experiences and insights and questions and, and the ability to really unfold uh, the teachings in a really integrated, organic way right in the moment um, that invites us to go deeper and deeper into our heart. Um, such a unique time to be able to get together as a group like that and drop all the facades, drop the masks, just rest in the heart and keep coming back to that and see what's arising. So uh, a, wonderful, a wonderful satsang, a wonderful way of keeping the company of the truth of ourselves and everyone there. So I hope you'll, you'll be able to join us for that. That starts on February 5th and registration is open until the 4th. So just email me if you're interested. So again, I want to thank you for coming this evening and bringing the fullness of your divine self, your sublime nature to this program and the commitment that you bring to practice and to walk that into the world, uh, a world in such desperate need of loving attention, caring attention for all beings, for the whole planet, for one another, for ourselves. Everything is in need of that. So we want to know the fullness of that that arises from the infinite because the poor mind trying to ladle out little cups of that on its own gets exhausted. So we really have to know the infinitude of being so we know the boundlessness that does come from that uh, infinite wellspring of love and compassion, patience and kindness, wisdom and grace. And that's who you are. So thank you for doing the practices and walking that into your everyday life. That's what matters. And then I look forward to seeing you again. Uh, the next time will be in February. So, namaste.